Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I have not been on here in a little over a month because I was super busy with my final research paper, but now I have a little bit more time to share some information with you guys. And as you can see from the title of this video, I will be sharing some reasons why your study permit visa got rejected. But guys, if your visa gets rejected, it is not the end of the world. These reasons that I'll be sharing with you guys can help you to not make those mistakes again. I am not an immigration consultant. These reasons that I'll be sharing with you are my own experiences or experiences from other people that I'll be sharing with you guys. But to make sure that you get the most updated information as possible, you check out the IRCC website. Without further ado, let's jump right into the video. Reason number one, your academic background. You want to make sure that your bachelor's degree is closely related to the degree that you want to study here in Canada. If you studied marketing in your, as your bachelor's degree and you're applying for nursing here, it's going to throw a red flag. So that's definitely something that you have to be careful not to do. Reason number two, financial support. Applying for a study permit, the immigration officer needs to see that you are able to financially sustain yourself while you're studying here in Canada. They don't want to see that you are going to suffer as a student. They don't want that. So make sure that you have enough funds to prove or you have enough documents to prove that you will be financially stable. So if your parents are going to be the one financially supporting you or if you're married and your husband is going to do it or if you have an aunt or an uncle, then you need that letter that letter of support and i'm going to do a couple of videos to show you guys how to write that bomb letter of support or that bomb letter of explanation during my uh study permit application process i did my own letter of support so i'm going to share that with you guys in the videos to come um you know how to write that letter of support to show okay this uncle will be helping me or this aunt will be helping me along with my uncle or whatever the case may be i'll help you guys with that when i was doing my process i showed more than ten thousand canadian dollars um and as a rule of thumb for every year that you will be studying you might want to show an additional eight to ten thousand dollars but that's just my opinion it's not it's not written in stone but to make your application more solid the more money you show the better for you reason number three improper documentation and let me just say this i think this mistake is really really silly and people can avoid making this particular mistake because there's a document checklist and if you follow that document checklist to the t you cannot go wrong. So I think this happens to people who don't take the time to read properly. So you are only allowed to submit one document at a time. You cannot attach multiple documents in the submission section. So what I did for my process, I used an app called Clean Scanner where it amalgamates all the documents and it converted the document to PDF. So everything was attached page by page. That way you don't have to worry about missing any document. There's an optional section. That's where I attach all my additional documents. Documents that's not in the submission checklist. I attach my documents, the extra documents that I need to support my claim in that section. And I use the app to put everything together in a PDF form and submit it that way. So you wanna make sure that you read properly to not miss anything and to not misunderstand what a particular section or a particular checklist is saying. So make sure that documents that needs to be notarized are notarized. Make sure that when you're making copies of your documents, they're properly copied and not blurred because the immigration officers, they deal with thousands of applications on a daily basis. They're not going to have time to shuffle through and to wonder if this is what this document is saying. So to make sure that everything is clear cut as possible for the immigration officer not to overthink what your application is saying, make sure you do it properly to avoid getting your application refused. Reason number four, your IELTS score. Some universities require you to sit the academic IELTS exam and their minimum requirement may be 6.0, but you got 5.5. 5. 
don't submit your application with hopes that they'll accept your visa if the minimum is 6.0 they expect you to get 6.0 and above, not 5.5. So don't just submit your application with a minimum of 5.5 and hope and pray for the best. It's not going to work. It doesn't work like that. So make sure you just submit what is required. Reason number five, lack of evidence that you will leave the country after your, your program finishes. So you're probably thinking, why would I want to show that I want to transition here after my program ends? you still need to show the immigration officers that you will leave the country that is a requirement for you to get the visa so if you have a booming business back home submit evidence if you have a thriving family back home submit evidence submit evidence that you have ties to your home country and you will leave after your program ends so yeah, I really hope that you guys found these information helpful. I really hope that you will apply it to your situation. If your visa got rejected, it's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the road. You can always reapply. And these are some of the reasons that you can apply to your situation to not get rejected again. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please go ahead and leave it down below in the comment section. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and do so and give this video a thumbs up while you're at it. I really appreciate you guys stopping by and I will see you guys next time on my next video. Bye everybody.